Hey everybody, welcome back to Pop Dust Presents. This week, I'm with Common Holly, commonly known as Brigitte. Brigitte is her name, but as an artist, she's Common Holly. Explain to us your uh, multiple personality syndrome. <laughs> Well, it's very personal. <laughs> Something I've been suffering with for about a year now. Wow. Um, when I discovered my second self to be Common Holly, um, that second self uh, is the music half of me. Wow. Um, so, yeah, Common Holly basically is just um, the project I created. Um, it's my solo music project, singer songwriter style. Uh, sometimes it's referred to as like dark folk or like indie rock, depending on the song. I think on your website there's it says you name it, buddy. You name it, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> and we will. All of that and more coming up. But for now, you say you know this was something that started about a year ago. Yeah. And how did your family take it when they found out that you were? Musical. Oh, they were devastated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But out of that devastation comes great inspiration. You have a new album, Playing House. That's right. Which is out now and is getting tons of shout outs on the web. Um, when you say playing house, do you mean like a child playing house or like a DJ? <laughs> a lot of house. It's obviously the DJ one, I mean. <laughs> okay. I mean, the album is like a, you know, traditional heartbreak album for sure. I think the main theme of it is basically just, um, you know, two kids pretending to be adults in an adult relationship before they're ready. Um, and primarily, I think that was my feeling in that relationship, so that was really the the source of inspiration, I would say, for the album. Yeah. I, the last relationship I was in, it was actually two kids in a trench coat <laughs> pretending to be an adult. Oh boy, was I embarrassed. <laughs> um, and uh, so, so they, uh, yeah, and you're from Canada, so they, they have, um, they have uh, relationships there? We do, actually. Really? Uh, we have um, igloos and relationships. Igloos? Yes, as well. Yeah. Is that a real thing, or is it like Canadian bacon and it's ham? <laughs> is an igloo just uh, a real thing? Definitely a real thing, just maybe not so much in the majority of places. Um, okay, and I guess I also am interested in uh, <laughs> that was some slick moves from down. <laughs> Dude, did you see me? Uh, I, I saw you, yeah. Well, you know, you were, the, 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 the friends at home, family and friends at home shouldn't see it, so if they did, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so, we're going to get to some of your music in a moment. You have this beautiful guitar and a beautiful guitar strap, which I will be asking about. Um, Should I show the viewers? Yes, oh yes, show them. It says metal. There's a snake. <laughs> Bye. 
good about that song? Um, so that song is, um, well, like I said, it's a breakup song. Basically, it's based off of um, an email that I received, which was a bit of an aggressive email, let's say. <laughs> yes. uh, I think it was a poor response to the breakup. Um, and I think that my reaction in turn was uh, maybe one that I developed into like a, an empathy reaction. Basically just like, I'll take what you have to give me and just hope that you'll heal from this. So that's the sentiment of it. It's a little heavy. Wow. Yeah. Um, how'd you get so good at guitar? <laughs> Um, you sold your soul? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. That was uh, the recent thing that I did was I, uh, so I sold so, my soul. Sold, sold your soul, yeah. yeah. Um, like, like a soldier soul? Like a, I've got soul, but I'm not a soldier, that kind of thing. Hey, we can't afford that. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll edit it out. <laughs> we can't afford musical cues like that. But luckily the killers are all big fans of the show. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, no, but not actually though, and, like you have a, a very like particular, <clears throat> like you have your own style of playing, it seems like you do a lot of finger picking in your songs. Yeah, I mean, I think I play the electric guitar rather like I would play the acoustic guitar, um, which is what I did for about 10 years, and I only just started playing electric maybe like a year and a half ago. So definitely a lot to figure out still on this, but I would say that the finger picking style has been my style probably because I think it like best accompanies a soft voice. That's probably where I developed it from. What made you transition to electric guitar? Um, it's an interesting question. I think like definitely there's an electric guitar trend out there now for singer-songwriters, so I'm sure that that informed the decision, but... So you're trying same, to be trendy? I'm trying to be hip and with it, yeah. Um, <laughs> Doing good. Yeah, um, and at the same time, like I think, I mean, I I've been starting to write a lot of new music that is very electric guitar centered, a little more distorted, maybe like slightly heavier, still you know in keeping with like the the sensibility of of softness, but um, maybe a little more edgy. And I think the electric lends itself a lot more. So it, it seems, what makes you like that particular style? Because so many artists today are, you know, take guitar completely out of the equation, you know, they're playing, or it's more of like a producer sends them a track, um, but you seem to be very dedicated to this, until a new trend comes along. <laughs> yeah, maybe until, yeah. yeah, something else comes along. I think it's, it's really because my songwriting process is, is totally guitar based and I often write on acoustic for sure, but I think I've never really been so interested in learning all the technology. I mean, I, I learn what I need to learn and then I will you know, collaborate when I need to collaborate. So for example, on the record playing House, um, I co-produced it with a good friend of mine, Devin Bate, and he's very much like the electroacoustic master Sweet. Shout out to him. Um, maybe another song? Yeah. You feel up for it? Yeah, I can do that. Sip of wine. Um, for our sponsors? Yes. And, uh, yeah, we should, we should go to commercial break probably. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll get people to sign up to subscribe, and yeah, then you don't have to watch the commercials. Amazing. But until then, consider Geico. <laughs> It's um, insurance. It, uh, a, reverse, a reverse mortgage isn't as bad as it seems, old people. <laughs> Find out how you can... <laughs> you know, you can get the point. Right? <laughs> get the perfect insurance every time.
to see you live, you're actually making your way about playing shows and things, right? You're that actually, is true. You're playing Brooklyn Bazaar? Brooklyn Bazaar? <laughs> Bazaar. Tomorrow. And tomorrow. Oh. Yeah. Where, where is that? Where can people find Brooklyn Bazaar? I think it's in Brooklyn. <laughs> Great point. It's a big, you know, it's one of the three largest cities, if it, if it was a city itself, just a little fact about New York City. It's true. Or Brooklyn, rather. That's true. It's, it's the Montreal the of New York. It's dark. <laughs> dark. It is dry. Montreal of New York. Winter's much longer in Brooklyn. It's true. <laughs> yes. um, so, yeah, so what, what time are you on? Uh, it's an early show, so I'm going to be on first at 7 p.m. tomorrow. Perfect, and then you can come catch me at Power Re Electric at 9. Perfect! I wasn't sure how we were going to pull this off. Yeah, well, I think we will. We'll manage just fine. We will manage just fine. I always like, that's a good note to, to sort of land on at the, at the end of, at the end of a, a, an interview. With Cross artist. promo. Well, well, no. She's got, she's manipulative and dark uh, and mysterious. It's like, not just me, it's all Canadians. Oh, uh, yes. You can trust me on that. I've heard, I've heard about that. It's like all, they're all very, they're all very sneaky. It's like what, what's with like, like the woods and moose? What's the, what's the plural of moose? Is it uh, pie? It's meese. Meese? Yeah. I swear, I, I swear, she's doing it again, <laughs> isn't she? You can't tell if she's serious. And now I see why she's breaking hearts around, around the world. <laughs> After Brooklyn, where are you gonna go? Uh, Brooklyn, uh, then we're going to we. I'm going to Washington, D.C. Uh, with the same bands. After Washington, Toronto, back to New York, Chicago, L.A., and Montreal. Nice. Seems a little roundabout, though. I mean, who... I'm, who's, who's I'm confused. Who's your logistics? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a team effort. We're all confusing <laughs> each other. You back to Canada, and then you'll come back to New York, and then Chicago. What about, like, Miami? No. Is there sun in your life? We're not going there, no. We are not going there. We as in, as in yes? We are not going there. French. Oh, Me. I have a wordplay. We, I have a, I have a question, no. Um, 
Do you have, does your guitar have a name? Because you said she, right? Yeah, yeah. actually, no. Um, my acoustic guitar had a name. This one doesn't have a name yet. Great point, though. Mm -hmm. uh, my acoustic guitar was called Terry because I felt it looked like an old man with tattoos. So I asked around if anyone knew any old men with tattoos. And my friend met someone at the Y named Terry, and thus Terry was born. This guitar has no name, so it's not at all relevant to this interview. That's actually like the best story. It's a little strange. <laughs> I, I asked my friends if they'd ever met an old man with tattoos, and so one of them did meet one at the YMCA. Of course. Where else would you? I mean. And that's where I mean, uh, you know, that's where the, the boys hang out and have have fun. Well, I have an idea for a name for the guitar. Okay. I was thinking jelly bean because old men can hand out jelly beans. Huh. <laughs> and this it just, is like... it just gets creepier. Like, <laughs> well no, it's sort of like your your one guitar kinda of led way to the other and it's you were trying to hand it. This was like birth a jelly bean time. that grew into something much greater. Maybe a stock. A bean stock. <laughs> Magic beans. <laughs> So now we all know we all know that outside of Pop Dust, Dan hands out jelly beans at the water. <laughs> <laughs> that is now <laughs> just the guitar. I like how he just slid in there. He's like, well, I was thinking, you know, maybe jelly bean because they're all been. Just off the top of my. Mind. I'm thinking. I'm thinking like. Custard. Or, or is that a first name or a last name? I think it would be general. Like, like a gen, like share. Yeah, or, or or like general custard. Well, common holly, and this is just, just general custard. custard. Yeah, that's fair. And it doesn't have to be like a, a a war reference, but it's kind of like a custard uh, flavor. I mean, I haven't tasted it yet, but just looking at but it. But haven't you? <laughs> I'm gonna have this away. Have you tasted it? Just try. a little you bit. Should, you should taste it. Um, I, I'm I talking uh, uh, figuratively, um, emotionally. I mean, we saw it. Was, you know, we witnessed. How are you liking New York? I like New York very much. I'm born in New York. Did we? We didn't talk about that. No, we did not. I mean, I mean, the the major significance of it is that I'm allowed to play music here, but other than that, I'm for all intents and purposes a Montrealer. So. Montrealer. Sorry. Uh, no, I blew my cover. Montrealian. <laughs> <laughs> so you were born here, and that's how you uh, you uh, skirt around the law. You circumvent the law. I see. It's a loophole. Blue you Canadians, you know, there's a real problem. People don't want to talk about it, but they come down here to have their kids so that, you know, they migrate south during the winter yeah. down to the U.S. to have their kids so that they're born in this sweet air of freedom. Just in case, you know. <laughs> and then we can escape back to Canada when we're done. Oh, yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> Health care for everybody and stuff. I mean, it's all just a little hokey. Like, a beautiful young prime minister <laughs> who's not like a, a racist, a misogynist. What are you trying to prove? <laughs> it's like, okay. Your prisons are better, nice, they got cable TV. They have cable TV? That's I don't know, I mean, I Netflix. Do they so... get pop dust? <laughs> <clears throat> Pop this, <laughs> Pop this is currently not on television. Not yet. Not yet. Well, anyway, sorry. I need to update my Tinder profile that I'm going to be on the public. Um, where do you want to rank amongst Canadians that Americans care about when when your career is has reached completion? You know, we've got Celine Dion. Um, Justin Bieber, Drake, Brian Adams. <laughs> um, well, I mean, go no further. I think we all know. Are you going to be, well, where do you fall in, in there? I mean, you've got to rank them right, right now? now. Yeah, and there are probably at least two of the five are watching because they're all fans of the show. <laughs> Celine. So Celine. So Celine. <laughs> 
I would strive to be at the Brian Adams League, but I think uh, Common Holly is really the league I'm at right now, so that's what we're working with, you know? Would you ever think of working with any of those people? Yes, I would think of that, yes. You would? Yeah. Well, because I put the thought I'm thinking of it right now. You're thinking of it right now. <laughs> Still thinking about custard. Um, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if Drake makes like this song about you? Yeah. Yes, I want that. You want that? When you want that? When I want that? Wouldn't you? Oh yeah. You could put it on your Tinder profile. I, 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 I will either way because I'm not, I'm not big on the truth. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's really not one of my selling points when I'm talking to ladies. You know. <laughs> They're not into that, you know. Yeah, I don't think so. I think you have a handle on some wisdom there. Um, well, a wisdom to you, too. And <laughs> what were you for Halloween? I am uh, I was a rock and roll hedgehog, uh, obviously. Like Sonic the Hedgehog? Uh, no, no, not like him. Like his, like, evil counterpart, Shadow? No, not that either. Just, uh, just a rock and roll hedgehog. Just not related to. Not at all. No. Rock and roll. What made it rock just and not. roll? Uh, I was playing guitar. <laughs> and what part of it was hedgehog? The costume. Uh huh. <laughs> rock and roll hedgehog. You see? That, Metal. That is cool. That, that is cool. Um, well. We would like to thank you so much for, for being here. Um, if you want to tell everybody one last time where they can find all of your all of your music and um, any sort of buried treasure that you might have hidden. I'm not I'm not gonna tell them that last part, but uh, the music you can find on Facebook. So if you look up um, facebook.com slash common holly music. Instagram is uh, Common Holly, Twitter Common underscore Holly, um, really and then if you forget all of those, there's CommonHolly.com. It's all in there. All right. Well, we'd like to thank you. We'd like to thank Geico Car Insurance for sponsoring this. Um, Thanks, Geico. The uh, the Republic of of Canada for allowing you uh, to take sabbatical. Um, and we look forward to hearing you. If you're in the New York area, come out to uh, Brooklyn Bazaar tomorrow, 7 o'clock. PM, right? PM. Early show, but not, not that early. <laughs> we're just. This is how we're going to. This is. Yeah. Is just like this? It's done. <laughs> you guys can't see the screen. Just kidding, it's That's, that's, yeah, no, I mean, you got these, these just dark, can't mysterious say eyes. Goodbye. And I'm like, if I look into them long enough, I'm going to figure out where that damn treasure is.